Good morning, it's Sunday morning. I hope that you are all able to put back your clocks one hour and got an extra hour of sleep, which is a great thing. But this is also uh, not just a, an ordinary Sunday. This is the Sunday before Remembrance Day, where we take time during Remembrance to remember those who gave their lives so that you and I can enjoy the freedom that we enjoy today. And we just want to give thanks to God and to those men and women who served in the armed forces in various uh, areas of, of uh, service uh, to our country and to us. So we just want to say thank you to them. The portion of scripture that we want to look at today, Jesus is talking to his disciples about something that we uh, kind of are looking at even today. There's many people that are going around, especially in the Christian world, who are trying to imply that we are living in the last days, the end times, as it were. Jesus, during his day, talks to his disciples about days to come, days that are ahead for them. And in Mark, the uh, 13th chapter, he does that by saying this to them uh, in response to something that they say. One of the things we have to understand in history is, is that during the days of Jesus, King Herod went out of his way to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. He tried to transform it back into its former glory. The main reason for doing that was to try and establish um, a geopolitical st and spiritual stability in the country. He wanted the Jewish religious leaders to be on his side so he didn't have to worry about them so much. And every time that one of them would um, lift his head up and, and try and revolt against the Roman occupation because he was a puppet king to the, the Romans. And because he built this temple anew, his, the disciples of Jesus Christ were marveling at what he had done. In fact, what's interesting as a note in history is that the only part of this temple that Herod built that's still standing today is the Western Wailing Wall, where the Jews go to pray. So it's kind of interesting that that wall could have been definitely part of what the disciples were talking about when they say this in the tenth, in the pardon me, in the thirteenth chapter of the book of Mark, verse one. As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, "Look, teacher, what mass of stones! What magnificent buildings! Do you see all these great buildings?" replied Jesus. Not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of war, don't be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginnings of birth pains. You must be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, don't worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given you at that time. For it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their, their parents and have them put to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. 
And Jesus says to his disciples, talking about things to come. What you need to understand is that there will be perilous times. Times where men's uh, hatred of me will flow over to you. As the church, we are the representative of Christ and God to the world. It's no wonder that Christianity is being looked at with disdain today. Paul says to us that in these last days, men will become lovers of self rather than of God. And they will replace the worship of God with the worship of self. They'll be God-haters. And as a God-hater, they will change their their thinking about the church because the church is the body of Christ on the earth. We are literally the visible sign that God exists to the world around us. Yes, people can see through creation that God exists. But many today would say that the church is that which we can kind of pick on. And we see that. We see that in various places, in various ways, that the church is being picked on. People one-on-one -on -one may accept you as being a Christian, but as a church as a whole, not so much. I'm glad we live where we live, because at least we still have a freedom to be able to worship freely. Many places in the world, Christians are despised. In fact, this week uh, was announced to be the week of the persecuted church, to pray for the church at large. Jesus is not just talking about that. Jesus is talking about a relationship, a view of who we are in the world and who you are individually in the world. As a Christian, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are not to allow ourselves to be affected by the things that are going on around us, the geopolitical turmoil that may uh, come against us. We need to stand fast in our relationship with, with Jesus. We need to stand firm in that relationship. We need to understand that in the last days when Jesus comes again, because Jesus is talking about his second coming here, he's not just talking about the first time he came, because he's already there when he's speaking to them. He came first as a servant, as a redeemer, to set the captive free. He came as the redeemer for many as redemption for the many. The second time when he comes, he comes as king of kings to carry us together in triumphal procession with him into the new kingdom that God has designed for us in Jesus Christ. But he says to his disciples, don't allow yourselves to get caught up in what you see, thinking that that is going to last for any great length of time. In fact, in 70 AD, we know that Titus came and destroyed Jerusalem and tore down this very building, which they just left. And he scattered the stones all over the place. And so that was prophetic looking forward to another time. Jesus says to you and me, hey, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough worries of its own. Live in today. Don't live by the temporary or the temporal. For the temporal will pass away, but the eternal will always be there. We need to continually be looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. 
We need to fix our eyes on him, not on the things that are happening around us, not allowing fear to grip our hearts, not allowing worry to grip us, but realizing that God is well able to keep us safe in him, that no matter what happens, God is still supreme and he will look after us. Even if it means that we give our lives, even if it means that those whom we thought we could trust become untrustworthy, Jesus is worthy of our trust. Jesus is worthy of our faith. Jesus is worthy of looking toward. We need to look at the eternal, not the temporal. And so Jesus wants his disciples' eyes not to be fixed on what they see, but rather allow them to see with the eyes of faith that which is eternal. That that glory far outweighs everything that can be built in this world. In fact, Peter, in his writing, will tell us that even though we go through trials and tribulations, the glory that awaits us is far greater than any eye or heart could even imagine. Being in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in eternity. So, we live in a, in a nation that has been preserved by God through the sacrifice of many. And so we take that and we see that even as they sacrificed their lives for our sake, so Jesus sacrificed his life for our sake. So that even as we can live in a sense of somewhat freedom today, the freedom we will have in Christ will be even greater than what we experience here. So don't let your eyes just be focused on what you see around you, but rather see with the eye of faith what God has prepared for you in eternity. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for what you've done. Thank you, Lord. And I just pray God again for our nation of Canada, and Lord, you would preserve our freedom. You say to pray for the government. And so we pray for the government that God, you would have your way in Jesus name. And Father, I just pray for each individual that's watching this, that God, you'd help them to turn their eyes from the things that they see around them, the turmoil of today, and to see the eternal, the place that you have prepared for us in eternity in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Happy Remembrance Day.